Okay, everybody, good morning and welcome to the City of Royal Oaks Memorial Day Observance. My name is Mike Sherman, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and I'll be guiding us through the program this morning. To get started, uh, let's give the parade committee, let them stand up and be recognized, and let them hear how we enjoy the parade committee. Dave, get some people out there. You guys stand up, please. Everybody in yellow. Thanks again. Long, hard work for these people. Great job. Thank you. Okay, to get started, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance together. We're all going to stand and do that to the flags, followed by the three anthems from Royal Oak High School. So, we'll get started. Thank you. High School. Good job. I'd like to bring up the uh, Reverend Preston Boyd now for the invitation. Reverend? Good 
morning, Royal Oak. In the book of Colossians, we're called to above all else put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. My dear friends in the community of Royal Oak, Michigan, and visitors, we come together this morning on this Memorial Day united as a community by a common bond. We come here today to remember our loved ones who paid the ultimate price so that everyone in America might enjoy the very freedoms that we have today. We come together as a community recognizing that our loved ones were joined on the battlefields throughout the history of our country, answering a call to duty, a call to honor, a call to their country. These brave men and women may not have always understood all of the political intricacies that they were waging battles for, but yet out of a sense of duty, out of a sense of love for their country, they answered the call of their nation. Today, we honor the memories of these brave men and women. We thank our God for their bravery, for their service, for their unselfishness in standing in the gap and fighting for the very highest ideals that America stands for, for all of her citizens and for all the world. As a community, we recognize the contributions of many people, of many faiths, of many ethnicities who fought and died for this country. We take pride in remembering these servicemen and service women who were united as one as they fought and died for our country. As we reflect on our loved ones on this Memorial Day that are no longer with us, we grieve our loss, but we also take joy in the descendants that they left behind. While our loved ones are no longer with us today physically, we still catch glimpses of them through their descendants that are here today in whom we yet see their smiles. We yet hear their voices, voices in, the, in their sons and their daughters and their grandchildren that resonate with a certain resonance that when they speak, when they laugh, we still hear them. We miss them but we will never forget them nor their sacrifice. As a community, the legacy they left behind is a great one. We pray that should the day arise that we too will have the same courage, the same valor, the same conviction that they did to answer the call of our country out of a sense of duty. For our unity, our combined sense of purpose is what has always made America great. My Royal Oak community, may you be blessed and comforted on this Memorial Day. And may your reflections on your loved one's lives bring you a sense of pride for their sacrifice. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Well said. Okay, I'd like to bring up uh, Mayor Foynier to introduce our guest, read some proclamations for our Grand Marshal and introduce our guest speaker, Mayor Fuenier. Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out today on a very warm day, Memorial Day. It's my privilege and honor to recognize through a proclamation from our city to our Grand Marshals today. So maybe we can first start with Mr. Jim McClory. Longtime resident of Royal Oak and an American hero. Like I said, it is my privilege and honor to read you this proclamation, sir. James M. McClory, United States Navy, World War II Pacific Theater. Whereas James Jim McClory was inducted into the United States Navy 75 years ago in June of 1943. And whereas, after completing basic training at Camp Perry, Virginia, Jim served in the U.S. Naval Construction Battalion better known as the CBs. Whereas Jim served at two vital spots in the Pacific Theater during World War II, and whereas Guadalcanal was Jim's first deployment, there Allied forces stopped the Japanese expansion, and after evacuation of the Japanese, the CBs developed a major base supporting the Allied advance up the Solomon Islands chain. And whereas New Catalonia was the next stop for Jim and the CBs and it was an important Allied base where the capital of New Caledonia served as the headquarters for the United States Navy in the South Pacific. 
And whereas Jim returned from World War II and met and married Anne in 1957, and in 1970, he and Anne and their four children, Michael, Daniel, Therese, and Robert, moved to Royal Oak. Whereas Jim, in usual fashion, threw himself into the community and devoted his time to the service of others, actively volunteering in numerous church and charitable organizations, but most especially at Providence Hospital in Southfield. Now therefore, be it resolved, I, Mayor Fournier, and the members of the Royal Oak City Commission, hereby express our admiration to a member of the greatest generation for his dedication and sacrifice to the citizens of the United States with his courageous service in the United States Navy during World War II and proclaim James McClory as a 2018 Grand Marshal of the Royal Oak Memorial Day Parade. Sir. Tough guy. Our second Grand Marshal is Carol Hennessy. Carol, come up please. Carol Hennessy is another lifelong, lifetime resident of Royal Oak who has through the years committed herself to service of our community, not just uh, to all of us, but especially to our veterans. And it's my privilege to read this proclamation from the city of Royal Oak to Ms. Carol Hennessy. She's also the president of the Royal Oak Memorial Society. Whereas Carol Hennessy has proven her dedication to Royal Oak's residents, and especially veterans through her many years of service, including being the current president of the Royal Oak Memorial Society, the former chairperson of the Memorial Day Parade Committee, and the past president of the Royal Oak Elks Wapiti Club. And whereas during Carol's tenure with the Royal Oak Memorial Society, she was instrumental in moving the Veterans Monument to its present site in the Barbara Hallman Plaza in front of the public library. The project took more than three years to complete. And whereas Carol directed the Memorial Day Parade and Veterans Ceremony for many years, and whereas on the 15th anniversary of 9-11, Carol planned and hosted a Memorial Society Ceremony to honor Royal Oaks Police and Fire Department. Whereas, for Carol's outstanding service, she received the Community Service Award from the Daughters of the American Revolution Three Flags Chapter. And whereas, on May 24, 2018, Carol will be a distinguished guest of Senator Marty Nolenberg at the Senate floor of the Michigan State Capitol for, for the memorial service. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Mayor Fournier, and the members of the Royal Oak City Commission hereby express our gratitude for Carol's dedicated service to the citizens of Royal Oak and the veterans and veterans everywhere and proclaim Carol Hennessy as the 2018 Grand Marshal of the Royal Oak Memorial Day Parade. I would just like to say thank you, but I'm not worthy of this. It's because of these people on this wall behind me on the monument that we have to thank for all they did to give us what we have today. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. But remember, you, you never forgot them, and that's why you're up here. Thank you. If you will, I'd also like to take an opportunity to recognize a few uh, officials that are here today. First of all, our fellow commissioners, um, Commissioner Kyle Dubuck is here today, uh, Commissioner Pat Perouche. Commissioner Shar Douglas, Commissioner Melanie Macy, Commissioner Randy Lavasser, and Commissioner Kim Gibbs. We have a full city commission representation. I also see Judge Meineke back here today. Yay! Our wonderful judge in Royal Oak. Let's give a round for Judge Derek Meineke. Representative State, Jim, State Representative Jim Ellison is also here today. State Senator Marty Nolenberg is here today. <laughs> Oakland County Commissioner David Woodward is also here today. And I believe we saw in the parade today, and I, I don't see her here right here, but it doesn't mean that she's not here. Um, Oakland County Prosecutor Jessica Cooper, as well as uh, Congressman Sandy Lack. 
Sheriff Bujard for also representing uh, the County um, Sheriff's Office today in the parade as well. In the spirit of what Ms. Hennessy said, this wall behind us marks the names of brave souls from our community who selflessly gave their lives for their country and for each other. They believed in something greater than themselves and represent the best of the American spirit. Today and every day, we honor their sacrifices and the sacrifices of all of our nation's fallen. We are reminded how fragile our democracy is and the cost of our freedom. Today, we not only honor the sacrifices of brave men and women, we celebrate their lives and the blessings they have bestowed upon us. Thank you for being here today, and thank you to all of our veterans. We have a very special guest speaker here today. We have Harry Les Croyle from the VFW. He was the state commander from 2014 through 2015. I know Mr. Sherman has some words of introduction. To welcome, Mr. Croyle. Thank you, Mayor Poirier. Uh, Les, come on up. Les is, uh, he's been doing things for veterans for most of his life. Um, Great guy. When I was commander at Royal Oak Post, uh, he helped me a lot and through his leadership. I became an all-state commander, and uh, I've learned a lot from him. So he's got a lot of good things to say. Um, so here's Les. Thank you, Commander. Just the way we rehearsed it. Good morning. Comrades, sisters, brothers, family, and friends. On Memorial Day, we honor our fallen, but we must also embrace the feeling of honor, patriotism, and pride. 152 years have passed since a drugstore owner in Waterloo, New York, encouraged businesses to close for one day to honor the soldiers who lost their lives during the Civil War. An idea that was well received. For one day, businesses closed, widows placed fresh flowers on graves, townspeople placed wreaths and crosses upon the headstones, and flags were flown at half staff. It was then an American tradition was born. From the earliest days of America's founding, our great nation has been blessed with generation after generation of patriots willing to lay down their lives in defense of our freedom and our way of life. We are truly fortunate to live in a country worth fighting for, to be afforded a way of life worth dying for. Millions of men and women have selflessly answered the call of our nations in need. Throughout our history, we fought for a myriad of reasons to mend America's wounded spirit to restore the strength of the free world and to free the world from tyranny, oppression, and evil. Today we pay tribute to those heroic patriots who made the ultimate sacrifice, who bravely rose up and fought for something greater than themselves, protecting a home to which they never returned. We honor their service, mourn their loss, and remember the families they left behind. In the quiet stillness of this hallowed day, we must remember there has been no other nation on earth whose sacrifice has been greater than ours. None who have given so much to afford freedom for others. The sacred ground at Arlington and our cemeteries in France, Belgium, Hawaii, the Philippines remain a sober testament to the steep price of achieving and maintaining freedom around the globe. With heavy hearts, we recall those comrades lost. They had names, they had families, they were our brothers and sisters, moms, dads, and children. It is their ultimate sacrifice and the grief-filled tears of the parents who have given America their own children and the spouses who are left to bear unthinkable burdens after their lives are forever changed 
and have paid the freedoms we enjoy today. In order to repay our debt to them, we must remain dedicated to honoring the legacy of our nation's fallen by educating all who believe Memorial Day is just another holiday. And by passing our knowledge along to the next generation so they may do the same. We must ensure the youth of tomorrow understand the true cost of freedom. There is no greater way to honor the memory of those who have secured it. We honor the dead by helping the living and caring for those who have returned from their wars. Serving with dedication and valor, America's veterans deserve proper medical care and compensation for their many sacrifices to our country. They deserve the opportunity for employment, education, and a home in which to live. Each of us here today must leave with a renewed commitment to do all we can to help those who have done so much for us and ask for nothing in return. As we depart, we will undoubtedly continue to bear the burden of loss that comes with losing a family member, friend, or one of our brothers or sisters in arms. But may we find comfort in knowing that their lives were not lost in vain and remain forever grateful to them for having gifted each of us the greatest gift on earth, freedom. Thank you for being here today. God bless America's fallen. God bless our troops wherever they may serve. And God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Les. And just a reminder, there's 26,000 troops from our beloved country in combat zones, combat zones today. So keep them in your thoughts also. 26,000. And the old saying goes, is uh, everybody loves the troop, but nobody wants to be one. Okay, Royal Oak High School is now going to do a musical selection of God Bless America. And the deal here is they're going to do the first set, and we're going to sing with them in the second set. Go ahead, Royal Oak. and uh, hold hands and just be happy. Give yourself a hand. You can be seen it. And uh, the dog was involved too. Pretty good. There he goes. Roger Brown, our Piper, if you get in position, we'll start the uh, laying of the wreaths. The leaf wreath layers to get in position, we'll call you up. 
Our piper does this every year, and we appreciate it, Roger. It's really hot to be blowing on those bags today. If we're ready, we'll have uh, Mayor Fournier in the city of Royal Oak. Veterans of Foreign Wars, Acorn Post 1669. Royal Canadian League. The Maple Leaf Post 84. American Legion Post 253. Daughters of American Revolution, Ezra Parker Group. Daughters of American Revolution, Three Flags Chapter. Disabled American Veterans, Chapter 19. Eagles in Auxiliary Erie 2092. Columbus. 
Royal Oak Memorial Society. Thank you. <laughs> Deputy Chief Frazier, would you come on up? He's going to be the reader while the police uh, fold the flag. So if you guys want to get in position, come on up. Good morning. On behalf of the police department, I want to thank all our veterans, past and present, for their service. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it's still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold of our flag is a tribute to our armed forces. For it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they are found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we may see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, and mothers, for it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. 
The tenth fold is a tribute to the Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion, portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in the Hebrew eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in the Christian's eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The thirteenth fold, or when the flag is completely folded, the stars are at the uppermost, reminding us our nation and God we trust. Uh, have the colors tendered, come forward. After they tend the colors, we're going to go right into the uh, rifle salute and taps, and that'll end our program today. Power pedals? Okay, girls, three of them. Good job, guys. 
Girl Scout Troop 76201. Charge. Be seated, please. They'll be firing weapons to you. Is that arms? Thank you, that ends our program today. Thank you for coming and remembering those who paid the ultimate sacrifice.